We're going to start with an introduction to managerial accounting. Why do we have managerial accounting? A lot of you have already, well, everyone in here should have already taken financial accounting. And we know that financial accounting deals with providing information to external users, creditor, um, people who extend credit, banks, potential investors. And it's a, it's a general overall synopsis of how the company's performing. Managerial accounting is just like what it says. It's providing information for the managers of a company. They want very different information, significantly different than external users, because they're getting this information to um, allow their job to be performed um, as best as it can. So, as you see here, um, these are the objectives for this chapter. Um, why do we have managerial accounting? Various classifications of some manufacturing costs we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how we come up with what we call the cost of goods manufactured. And we are not going to talk about anything in um, objective four. So just so you know, I'm not going to even go there. You're also going to see in these PowerPoints, I'm going to insert some quiz questions. A lot of the quiz questions you'll have are going to be very similar to this, if not this. So um, it behooves you to pay attention to those questions also. So managerial accounting, what is it? Managerial accounting provides economic and financial information for managers and other internal users, not external users. Internal users utilize this information to help make decisions, and we're going to talk about that. Let's see. Um, this chart provides you with an understanding of how financial accounting is different from managerial accounting. Financial accounting deals with external users outside of the company. Here we see stockholders, creditors, regulators. Regulators, depending on what type of industry you're dealing with, you have to provide information. Um, a lot of times payroll reports for um, unemployment or if we're dealing with OSHA requirements they may request certain information the IRS may request information so financial accounting they want to see the big picture um, with financial accounting financial statements happen quarterly sometimes and then annually if it's a public company they are required to submit to the Securities and Exchange Commission quarterly reports. Um, contents, it pertains to businesses as a whole. They're very condensed and usually they're audited by a CPA. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is for internal users. It's used as special purpose reporting for specific decision making. This slide right here is really important. You're going to see this on the quiz. Comparing financial accounting to managerial accounting. We don't run reports just quarterly or annually. We run them as needed. And we're not seeing an overall picture of the company. We're seeing specifics that specific managers need to make decisions with their job. Content of reports pertains to subunits of the business. Extremely detailed, extends beyond double entry accounting, and basically whatever report is being run is helping those managers see what costs do they maybe see as being too high, what do they maybe need to do to streamline a process. It's to help them make better decisions in their realm of what they're responsible for. No independent audits. Think about this. When a company's public, they're given the opportunity to have people invest with them. Therefore, there's a higher scrutiny of those reports because we don't want them to be false. With managerial accounting, it's only the people inside the company that are getting those reports. So if something is amiss, you're not hurting external people. Uh, people that um, are investing money in your company 
and you're, you know, they'll be deceived. This is for internal um, purposes only. Therefore, auditors don't need to go in and audit these reports. They're for the people within the company. This is another important slide. To know what the difference is between these three functions management performs. Planning, directing, and controlling. This is why we have managers. They help plan, they direct those plans, and they make sure that whatever the budgets are are in line with what's really happening or controlling those costs. So planning is maximize short-term profit and market share, committing to environmental protection and social programs, and adding value to the business. The directing piece is coordinating activities in human resources, implementing objectives, providing incentives to motivate employees, hiring and training, and trying to run a smooth operation. Controlling, keeping those activities on track, seeing if goals are met, deciding maybe where changes need to happen, and evaluating. So be familiar with which of these activities falls into which category. Oh, here we got one. A distinguishing feature of managerial accounting is A, external users, B, general purpose reports, C, very detailed reports, or D, quarterly and annual reports. Now, don't go getting this wrong. This is the first one. What do you guys think? Now, that's going to scare you. No one's going to answer. But I tried to highlight this one, so it's a win-win. Which of those four um, ideas or suggestions would be part of managerial accounting? It's not external users, because remember, financial accounting is for external users. Managerial accounting is for internal users. General purpose reports, uh, so very detailed, see, okay? Got another one for you. I find these helpful, so when we're learning on information, and it's like, how is she gonna test me? Like, what kind of multiple choice? At least you get an idea of, of what I want you to learn. In an, an analogous sense, external user is to internal user as generally accepted accounting principles are to awesome okay i'll tell you this is kind of tricky but you're exactly right relevance to decision they are usually for a special purpose or very detailed but the purpose is to make decisions that's about as tricky as it's going to get I'm not going to spend time on this. You, you can read about it in your book. Organizational structure. Know that an organizational structure is a great tool that most companies do put out. So you see the relationships among people and their responsibilities, the authority and responsibilities. You'll see that one of the steps in managerial accounting is oftentimes to start with an organizational report so you see how the lines of authority work. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. What activities and responsibilities are not associated with management's function? Planning, accountability, controlling, directing. Oh, you guys are so Oh, I screwed that one. A manager that is establishing objectives is performing which management function? Good. 
see why I want you to understand how those three um, activities that you understand what um, what falls under each of those activities. Okay. Next thing, we're going to talk about the various types of costs that go into manufacturing products and the difference and know this, this is important, between what we call a product cost and a period cost, okay? Managers should ask questions such as, what costs are involved in making a product or providing a service? If we decrease production volume, will costs decrease? What impact will automation have on total costs? How can we best control costs. Now, if you think about this, depending on what kind of type of um, company you're dealing with, you're going to get different answers for and, and quantity. You're going to get different answers. What costs are involved in making a product or providing a service? When we're dealing with a home, a home builder, going to be a whole different animal than preparing tax returns. I primarily provide a service and my service requires software, rent for an office building, salaries. You know, it's pretty much an intellectual, or it's not intellectual, but it's a um, service oriented, which involves people. But if we're dealing with making automobiles, we're going to probably have a lot more automation. And when we're dealing with automation, we're talking about intensive equipment, capital equipment. So in a situation like that, if we cut down or decrease our volume, sometimes that equipment's going to remain idle. Do, am I making sense what I'm trying to say to you? So really, these questions are going to vary so much based on what we're building, what we're making, what type of company we're dealing with. Okay, so these are the questions managers want to know, and not this is why we provide reports for them, so they can get this information. Manufacturing costs consists of activities and processes that convert raw materials into finished goods. So, in the event of um, an automobile. What would be some of the raw materials? Just yell them out. Steel. Steel. What? Hoses. Hoses. Tires. Rims. My car wouldn't start this morning. First time ever. It's a 2003. That was frustrating. Batteries. Right? <laughs> gas. Well, yeah, that's not a good thing. Gas. My, the light was on. My husband always says, do not let that car get below a quarter of a tank in the winter. Guess what? It was on E and the light was on. That was my problem. What else with automobiles? Paint? Well, that's not really a direct material. Excuse me on that one. Steel. Glass. Wires. Those are all the materials that go into making a car. Then you have the labor, those people that are directly on the production line. Then we're going to have something called manufacturing overhead. That is a series of a lot of stuff that we don't know where else to put it, and so we lump it into this big container called manufacturing overhead that then we can allocate to individual items. Hang in there with me, okay? Um, okay. Direct materials, raw materials, basic materials and parts used in the manufacturing process. Direct materials are raw materials that can be physically and directly associated with the finished product during the manufacturing product. So about a year and a half ago, my husband and I bought an RV. We went into that age where it's like, I used to think that was such a nerdy thing to do and now I'm loving it. So this RV has a chassis, is that what you call it, chassis? Chassis, you know, that the, it sits on. 
And then from there, it has the various components um, to put into that RV. So you've got sinks, you've got cabinets, chairs, the engine, um, the various tubing for the water and the sewage. There's a lot of, of materials that can specifically be identified for our vehicle. The leather or the fake leather for the seats. Then there are things that will be used, the nuts and the bolts, but they're so menial, it's hard to just put that directly into direct materials. So that's where we're going to talk about manufacturing overhead. Direct materials. Indirect materials are not physically part of the finished product or they're, an impra they're impractical to trace to the finished product because their physical association with the product is too small in terms of cost. That's going to be part of manufacturing overhead. What else would that be besides nuts and bolts? Various types of tape, maybe? What else? Glues. Exactly. You still need those materials, but to try to spend the energy and time to allocate that per item is just, it's not cost effective. So we're going to lump them into manufacturing overhead. Direct labor. Work of factory employees that can be physically and directly associated with converting <clears throat> raw materials into finished goods. I like to say this, they're on the assembly line. You've got a cleaner, a custodian, who's cleaning the bathrooms. Are they directly on the line? No. That's going to jump into manufacturing overhead. What about the cafeteria that feeds those individuals? Manufacturing overhead. They're still employees. They still provide a service, but they're not attached directly to that um, direct labor on that automobile. Indirect labor, work of factory employees that has no physical association with the finished product or for which it is impractical to trace cost to the goods produced. Okay? So if we have a cafeteria worker, for us to try to say, okay, on this particular line of automobiles, we had 50% using the cafeteria. I mean, it's just ludicrous to try to create that, so we put it into a manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead. Costs that are indirectly associated with manufacturing the finished product. It includes all manufacturing costs except direct materials and direct labor. We sometimes can call it factory overhead or indirect manufacturing costs. I've never heard the word burden before, but it's all the other lump costs that are not direct materials and direct labor. What would this be? How about insurance on the factory? You need insurance on that factory and the utilities in that factory, especially in Minnesota, to perform, to, to make those um, automobiles. But it's really not directly related to that automobile, so it's going to go into manufacturing overhead. Which one of the following is not a direct material? <coughs> a tire used for a lawnmower? Plastic used in a covered case for a home PC. Steel used in the manufacturing of steel radial tires. Lubricant for a ball bearing joint for a large crane. Come on. You guys are so good. Which one of the following is not considered material cost? Partially completed motor engines for a motorcycle plant. Bolts used in manufacturing the compressor of an engine. Rivets for the wings of a new commercial jet. Lumber used to build tables. This is a tricky one because we're going to start talking about this. Perfect, guys. A. Partially completed motor engines for a motorcycle plant isn't going to be put in material costs. We're going to talk about that. Guys, I'm kind of letting some of these go. This is where out of class you can spend time. And this is sometimes really informational and helpful. 
for you to look at these, but I'm not going to spend time in class on this. Product cost versus period cost. Product costs are all the things that make up in producing the product. This, this um, Dell computer, the memory inside, the keyboard, the plastic, whatever. This makes up the product. That would be the product cost. Costs that are an integral part of producing the product. If they're product costs, we're going to record when we purchase these and utilize these in what we call an inventory account, which we know is an asset, isn't it? Is an inventory an asset? It's not going to be put into cost of goods sold until we sell that unit. And we'll talk about that. I think you guys had some of this in financial accounting, where when you purchase products like a merchandising company, when you purchase the goods, they're inventory until they are sold. And then once they're sold, they're taken out of an asset and they're put into cost of goods sold. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes? No? Product versus period cost. Period costs are charged to an expense account when they happen. They're not manufacturing costs and they include selling and administrative expenses. So the president, the CFO, the payroll department, those are period costs. They're not part of making a product at all, right? Um, the salaries of those individuals, the rent on the, the spaces those individuals use would all be period costs. So here we see the various um, allocations of product costs versus period costs. <clears throat> product costs are going to be your direct materials, your direct labor, and your manufacturing overhead. Period costs are going to be selling expenses and administrative expenses. So, suppose you started your own snowboard factory, KRT boards. Here are some of the costs that your snowboard factory would incur. Assign the following costs. Materials of $30 per board. Where would we put this? Direct materials. Labor cost of $40 per board. Depreciation on factory equipment. Manufacturing overhead, exactly. Property taxes on the factory building. Manufacturing overhead. Advertise, oh sorry, advertising costs, that's part of selling, right, period. Sales commissions, period. Maintenance salaries, factory facilities, manufacturing overhead. Anything to do with that factory is going to be product. Co uh, salary of the plant manager, manufacturing overhead. Cost of shipping the boards, period cost. Selling and admin are period costs, okay? Product versus period cost. If KRT boards produces 10,000 snowboards the first year, what would be the total manufacturing costs? So we've got 30 bucks in materials times 10,000. We've got 40 bucks in labor times 10,000, and we've got the depreciation of 25,000. Property taxes of six, maintenance salaries of 45, salary of the plant manager. So our total manufacturing costs for those 10,000 snowboards are $846,000. Which one of the following is not considered as material cost? Would it be A, partially completed motor engine? I already did this, didn't I? 
Sam's arm. That's going to happen sometimes. Sales commissions are classified as? Yes. Okay, now what I want to do is let's look at exercise 1 4 in the book. Let's see if I can make this bigger for you. So, we have here, Ninth Company reports the following costs and expenses in May. From the information, determine the total amount of manufacturing overhead, <clears throat> product costs, and period costs. One thing I just want to show you real quick is in the homework, I have an Excel sheet. And this Excel sheet covers a lot more than just the homework. So sometimes these exercises that we'll do, you can use the Excel. Most of you don't have a computer on you, so we're going to just do it all by hand. But I just wanted you to see. One four, E14. You see, I can, you get what I'm doing here? So you can, just so you know, um, do these through Excel. So here's all the information. Our job is to determine what the manufacturing overhead is. So if we see here, we've got factory utilities. Mm -hmm. Depreciation on factory equipment. Mm -hmm. Indirect factory labor, indirect materials, direct materials. What's that going to go under? Direct materials. Factory manager salary, manufacturing overhead. Do you see what I'm doing here? So determine the amount of manufacturing overhead for Factory, let me just bring this down so we can put this in here too. That's going to make it hard for you to see, but when you're looking at this again, well, I'm not going to worry about it. Factory utilities is how much? <coughs> 15.5? Depreciation is? Indirect factory labor? You guys get what I'm doing here? <coughs> Indirect materials, factory manager salary, property taxes, factory repairs. So that's going to give us a total of 170350 Do you see how everything that's related to that factory, but is not direct materials and direct labor. We're going to go into that, okay? B says determine the amount of product costs. What are our direct materials? Uh, What's our direct labor? Uh, our manufacturing overhead is going to be from up here. So our product costs are going to be $377,050. That makes sense? Now we're supposed to determine the amount of period costs. Depreciation on delivery trucks. Why is this not a manufacturing overhead? Selling. Selling. Depreciation is how much? Uh, $3,800. Sales salaries. Repair to office equipment? What well, what if it would have said repair to the factory? Yes. Advertising? Uh, office supplies? Ah.
69,140. Do you guys think you could do something like that? I have a question. You bet. When we're looking at salaries, will you ever require us to um, extrapolate it? I know sometimes we have to the state will have to look at, well, I, my annual salary is 75000 for this employee, but this reports just for Q1, so I'll have to divide their annual salary. By Usually two. not. The only time as we get further along, if, um, let's say, someone's job, 70% of it is on the assembly line and 30% is supervising, then, but I don't think you're gonna have that yet, okay? Again, my goal isn't to trick you, okay? It's to, to help you understand where the various aspects go. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Does anyone need a break? And guys, no, if you need a break, just, Feel free to walk out. It's okay with me, okay? Okay, now moving on. A bicycle company has these costs. Tires, salaries of employees who put tires on the wheels, factory depreciation, advertising expenditures, lubricants, spokes, salary of factory manager, salary of accountant, handlebars, salaries of factory maintenance employees. Classify each cost as direct materials, direct labor, overhead, or a period cost. So guys, tires. Salaries of employees who put tires on the wheels. Okay, sorry. There, you see it. Um, it's kind of like what we did earlier. Direct materials can be directly associated with those products. Direct labor, only working on those goods, overhead, all the minuscule pieces. The period costs are the advertising and salary of the accountant. Okay? This is key. What we're talking about right now is what I care about for this chapter. Okay? This is what I care about. That you are able to distinguish what type of cost goes where. Cost of goods sold. Under a periodic inventory system, the income statements of a merchandiser and a manufacturer differ in the cost of goods sold section. In financial accounting, you worked on manu uh, merchandising where they purchased their products already completed and all they're doing is selling them, like Target and Walmart, Dick Sporting Goods. They are not manufacturing the goods. They buy them at cost and turn around and sell them. And so, for the most part, you have inventory left. When you're dealing with a manufacturing company, we have so much more involved in the various costs we're going to talk about. In With a merchandiser, we start with beginning inventory. Does this sound familiar to any of you guys? Then we add items we purchased during the year. Then we subtract the ending inventory that gives us our cost of goods sold. With the manufacturer, we have beginning finished goods inventory. Think about that. That is the, when we started the year or the period, the items sitting that were finished, we just haven't sold them. Then we add to it cost of goods that have been manufactured. We subtract from it ending finished goods inventory to give us our cost of goods sold, okay? The cost of goods sections of the merchandising and manufacturing income statements are showing for a merchandising company, the beginning inventory, the cost of goods purchased, then we show all the cost of goods available for sale, minus our ending inventory, gives us our cost of goods sold. With a manufacturing company, we have finished goods as the beginning of the period, cost of goods manufactured, which are then cost of goods available for sale, less our finished goods inventory, give us 
are costs of goods sold. Um, cost of goods manufactured, see illustration 1-9. Let me, oh, I think I find it here. Okay. Cost of goods manufactured. Our total manufacturing costs are going to equal the direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead in the current period. The total work in process is the cost of beginning work in process and total manufacturing costs for the current period. Okay, total work in process. So we've got total cost of work in process. Then from there, we're going to come up with the ending work in process. So what this means, guys, is in a perfect world, we start a car and we want to finish it in that same period. But sometimes we might start a car four days before the end of the period. And that car's not going to be finished when we end December 31st. So it's not a finished good yet. It's a work in process. It's half finished, some bit finished, so it's still inventory until we really finish it. That's where we're adding an extra element in our manufacturing piece of the cost of goods. So as you see here, our cost of goods manufactured schedule, not cost of goods sold, these are cost of goods that are manufactured, start with the work in process at the beginning of the period. We add to that our raw materials inventory, what we purchased in raw materials, our raw materials available for use, then our raw materials at the end of the period show us what we've used in raw materials. The direct labor goes directly in here. Then our manufacturing overhead is going to be all of those miscellaneous items, indirect labor, factory repairs, utilities in the factory, depreciation, insurance, give us our total manufacturing. So we have total manufacturing costs during the period of 376800 Our total costs of work in process meaning what we started plus all of these give us 395.2. But what is still work in process at the end of the period is 25.2, which means we have manufactured 370,000 worth of product. So what we're doing is we're adding an extra piece here. We're adding in an extra item in our cost of goods called work in process, what we started the period with, and then we have to take into account what was work in process at the end of the period. All the rest we've manufactured, okay? So, Keystone Company, March 1st, our raw materials is 12,000, our work in process is 2,500, we had materials purchased in March, 90. Direct labor in March, 75. Manufacturing overhead in March, 220. We are going to prepare the cost of goods manufactured schedule for the month of March. What are we going to start with, guys? Work in process, March 1st, aren't we? So, Work in process, March 1st, 2500. See, we're getting that 2500 here. Okay. Then our direct materials are going to be our raw materials that we began with, what we purchased during the month. We had 102,000 available. But the raw materials inventory on hand at the end of the month shows we didn't use those, did we? They're still on hand. So the difference would be the raw materials that we used, our direct labor, our manufacturing overhead, 
This gives us all the manufacturing cost, and the total work in process would be our manufacturing cost plus what we began the period with. Then we take into account our work in process as of the end of, of the month gives us what we manufactured for the month. Okay? Um, I think the next one is uh, 1E7. Let me look. hard. Right. Um, the syllabus. Thank you, though. No. What did I say? Seven. Okay. Well, six. This is this online book, which sometimes is wonderful, but they change the format, so I'm. Come on. Let's take a look at 1-7. Now, I want you to try to do this on your own, as I'm doing it with you. National Express reports the following costs and expenses in June of 2017 for its delivery service gives you indirect materials, depreciation, dispatcher salary, property taxes on the office building, CEO salary, gas and oil for the delivery trucks. You know what? I let my um, nephew get into my account, so that might be what's happening. I just need to tell them not to do it every other Thursday, Tuesday night. Did I say 37? Let me see if I can save it off while I'm... Figures, notebook. I don't know how to. Can I put it in my notebook? Yeah, I can do that. I can print it as a PDF. Actually, that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to print the next 10 pages as a PDF so I can jump in it. The beauty with technology, it can work so great, but when it doesn't work, I hate it. Where would it go now, one note? Oh. 
See, I think well. Sorry, guys. Okay, what I'm going to do here. Okay. Um, so basically, and this is too small. I'll just get out of here. So. As you see here, we're supposed to figure out the delivery service is the product cost. They're not making automobiles here. They're making, their, their product is delivery. Uh, it's a service, but their cost in this delivery. So we are supposed to come up with what the product costs are and what the period costs are. So I'm gonna give you about two minutes and let's, Let's look at it and then we'll get back on it. Is that okay? Okay, guys. So, in this particular E17, we're supposed to come up with the product cost and the period cost. Okay? So, what I'm going to do here is, if I can, So we've got product cost, Where's the merge product there? And then we're going to have period costs. Okay. What do you? What can we do for um, a product cost? What's one of the first ones here, guys? Indirect materials. So we've got indirect materials of how much? $6,400? Next. What's next, guys? Depreciation on delivery equipment? Of uh, 11 2. Next, dispatcher salary. Five thousand. Next, gas and oil. Twenty two hundred. Driver salaries. Sixteen thousand. And what's the last one? Three hundred. Forty one one. How many of you guys get that? Okay. Now the period cost. What do we have? Property taxes. Property taxes on the office building is eight seventy. CEO salary. Advertising, 46. Office supplies, 650. Utilities, 990. Repairs, on office equipment. Total here, 19,290. 
That makes sense, guys? Okay, now let's look at the next one. One eight. Lopez Corporation incurred the following costs while manufacturing its product. So it gives us all these various costs. We are supposed to compute the cost of goods manufactured and the cost of goods sold. Okay? So this is a little trickier. What do we start with when we want to calculate cost of goods manufactured? We can go back and look at what we did here. Remember when we want cost of goods manufactured? We start with work in process. Then we're going to add just like this. So what we're going to do in this example, in computing our cost of goods manufactured, we are going to start with work in process on January 1st was 12000 and it was fifteen five at December 31st. Finished goods inventory was 60000 at January 1st and 45600 at December 31st. So we're going to take all this information and from that create our cost of goods manufactured, okay? You good with that? So let's add cost of goods manufactured. Are you, you guys able to see this okay? Yeah. Okay. So the cost of goods manufactured, what are we going to start with? What? Whip. Now guys, I'm going to refer it as whip, and you will understand. Work in process, whip, okay? Just makes it easier instead of typing it out. January 1st, what is the work in process? Now what are we going to do? Direct materials used. How much? Oh gosh, I'm sorry. That helps. Direct materials? Direct materials, 120. Direct labor, 120. Is what? 110? What's next? Now we have a couple manufacturing overheads, don't we? Now, just so you know, another thing I might do a lot, OH, overhead, okay? What's one of our first manufacturing overheads? Yes. Depreciation on the plant is how much? What's next? Factory supplies is 23 property taxes So we've got 97 there. So if we take, sorry, it's just not enough room here. If we then show total manufacturing costs, 
we're going to take this plus direct labor and direct materials, let me do it again, equals this plus this plus this, 327,000, right? Then the next piece is total manufacturing overhead. You know what? This should be total manufacturing overhead. I screwed up. Okay? Okay, total manufacturing cost. You're right, 327. Then we're going to have total cost of whip. Now this is where we're going to have what we began the period with, plus everything we've put in so far, 339, right? What is our, less our ending whip is how much? Our ending whip is 15.5 here, you see that? Ending with 15.5. So our costs of good goods manufactured is what? This minus 15.5. 323.5. How many of you guys, does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay. Let's go back here and pick up where we left off and now talk about cost of goods sold. So we understand how to calculate cost of goods manufactured. We start with our beginning whip. <coughs> we add our direct materials, direct labor, all of our manufacturing overhead. From that, we then add our beginning whip, and when we subtract out our ending whip, that will be all the cost of goods we've manufactured, okay? Now, what we want to talk about is on the balance sheet, the balance sheet accounts for various items that have not sold yet, and they can consist of consist of our raw materials, our work in process, and our finished goods. They're all inventory, they just have different levels, or they're classified depending on what stage they're in. So as you see here, in the current asset section of a merchandising company, we just have one inventory. But in a manufacturing, we have it broken down a little more into our finished goods, those are ready to be sold. Our work in process is half completed and our raw materials are just the parts, the pieces. All of it totals our inventory, but in a manufacturing company, we have to break it down a little more. A manufacturing company reports costs of good manufactured as A, a current asset on the balance sheet, B, administrative expense on the income statement, C, component in the calculation of cost of goods sold on the income statement, or D, component of the raw material inventory on the balance sheet. Component of the calculation of cost of goods sold on the income statement. Okay. Uh, I think I got us a little far ahead on that one. Let's not do that one. Where is it? Okay, let's do this one. What is work in process inventory generally described as? A, cost applicable to units that have been started in production but are only partially completed. B, costs associated with the end stage of manufacturing that are almost always complete and ready for customers. 
C, costs strictly associated with direct labor. D, beginning stage production costs associated with labor costs dealing with bringing in raw materials from the shipping docks. A, good guys. Okay. So what I want to do is go back and show the cost of goods sold. And I don't think we have done that yet. Cost of goods manufactured. The in, okay, so this is now the next step of this exercise we're going to do. We have calculated so far cost of goods manufactured. Now the second part of this exercise, we're supposed to calculate cost of goods sold, okay? The difference is we are going to take what we began the period with our finished goods. We're going to add to that what we just did, our cost of goods manufactured. We'll subtract from that our ending finished goods. And the difference is going to be cost of goods sold, right? So now let's go back and look at that second part of the problem. This problem says finished goods inventory was 60,000 on January 1st and it was 45,600 on December 31st. So what we need to do is create the um, cost of goods sold. So I'm going to show the cost of goods sold. What are we going to start with? Finished goods. And what were our finished goods at the start of the year? 60. How much were our cost of goods manufactured? 325. Here it is, 323.5. Okay? So we're going to take that. So we've got um, cost of goods available for sale, which would be the combination here, wouldn't it? Three eighty three five. What were the finished goods? at the end of the period? Forty-five, six. So, our cost of goods sold is going to be the difference, isn't it? Goods available for sale minus our finished goods. 337.9. that make sense, guys? How are you guys doing? Now let's look at exercise 1-9. We are going to complete the cost of goods manufactured schedule for Hobbit Company. So you see here, it gives us some information, but we should be able to go, based on the information we have, and calculate the missing parameters. Okay? So, who would like to begin this? Where would, I think we start backwards. We know our cost of goods manufactured is 540. If we have work in process of 81,000, wouldn't we add the two to come up with our total cost of work in process? Wouldn't we? Yeah? 
Yes, no. So 540 plus 81,000 would give us how much? 621 right here would be our total costs of work in process. 621. Okay? Now, our total cost of work in process generally is our total manufacturing cost plus our work in process, isn't it? So if this is 621, then we know this is a summation of the 210 plus our total manufacturing cost, right? Which means what would be our total manufacturing cost here? You guys, have, what? What would it be? Or, or eleven. So if this is four eleven, we know this is a result of total overhead plus direct labor plus direct materials. So we could plug in what our direct labor is, can't we? Right. And what would that be? 411, we've got the 180, 120, one what? 109. So our raw, um, our direct labor will be 109. Now, our direct materials used, we see 180. We should be able to go and say 180 plus our raw materials Indian inventory of 2025 would be our total raw materials available for use, right? 2025. Then we know we had to start with a certain amount in inventory because if this is 2025, we purchased 158. What did we start the period with? Do you see what I'm doing? Should I should I do this? Spell this out a little clearer, or is this okay? Okay. So this is a way to help you see how you can come up with all the different figures. Okay. Now, the one assignment you are going to be responsible for for. Um, class, and this won't be due until February 2nd, because since we're still going over this, I give you an extra week to turn it in. Okay. You're going to prepare a cost of goods manufactured schedule. You're going to prepare an income statement through the gross profit, and you're going to prepare the current asset section of the balance sheet. Okay? Do you think you can handle that? I probably will create a lecture for you on um, a problem similar to this, or I might just create this lecture so you can work through it with me, and that you'll have to <coughs> upload it to the system. Okay, so any questions on this chapter before we move on?